Let's take a few minutes now to talk about fear. Now, fear is intrinsic. It's innate to the human experience. And I believe as a spiritual person that we incarnated into this 3D landscape with the full knowledge and appreciation of the fact that we would experience fear. Now we experience fear as a result of our own experiences, our life, our parents, our our um, childhood, the things that we've encountered along the way, along the path, those things have caused us to face fear and also to onboard, take on and integrate certain fears. But in addition to that, we live in a reality where the matrix of this infrastructure of 3D, not to get too cosmic with it, but the matrix of this place in which we live is fearful. There's so much fear built into that, and it's always being signaled to us. Of course, if you're even mildly sentient, you know that if you turn on the news, you're going to be just pumped full of fear. And if you're talking to others about current events and hot topics, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some fear built into that. And so it's all around us. It's in our own timelines, and it's also in the world that we live in. Fear, fear, fear. And again, as a soul, I believe we knew we were going to come here to deal with fear. And so if you have fear right now, congratulations, you're human. We all have fears. Fears aren't anything but communication. In fact, they're an energetic communication. And when we feel fear, we ought to listen because the fear is actually communicating something that's out of alignment in ourselves. We talked about the screen of life and that which is showing up in your experience, the people that you meet when you're walking down the street or the opportunities or lack of opportunities that you're experiencing in your life. That's what's happening on that screen of life. And often we'll see our fears play out on that screen as well. If we have a fear of rejection, for example, we'll see in the experiences of our lives events and moments where we are rejected, where we are criticized, or where we're brought into the energy of shame. And that's uncomfortable, and nobody likes to feel it, but I've trained myself, and I want to encourage you to do the same. I have trained myself when I'm feeling that discomfort to say, oh, thank you, thank you. It's showing up on the screen of my life so that I can then follow the thread of that back into myself and find out what's out of alignment. Because the truth of the matter is, if somebody's rejecting me or criticizing me, that's their own stuff. Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements, Chapter 2, don't take anything personally. By the time they say it to me, it has had to move through the entire filtration system of them. And all their beliefs and all their experiences and all their own failures and all their own successes. So that by the time it hits my ears, it doesn't even resemble me. So you can criticize me all day. All you're doing is showing me more of you. And I bow to the divine in you. I understand we're all in process. But if I take that rejection or that criticism personally, if I onboard it, take it in, integrate it, it becomes part of who it is that I am. In that same book, Don Miguel Ruiz says, if you take it in, if you agree to it, the four agreements, if I agree to what you say that I am, it's like you've cast a spell over me. And now I'm being operated and truly puppeted based on that spell, which is a fear. And fear is always a lie. God does not give us a spirit of fear, ever. Our God is a God of love. Our God is a God of divinity. Our God is a God of the I am. That's the power position. That's who created us. And in God's image were we created to be powerful and creative as well. That's the truth. And see, when we walk in the power of the truth of who we are, it casts out all fear. That's why we started with a lesson on self-concept, because if you can get into alignment with that, if you can start vibrating with who you truly are, that alignment necessarily takes care of all the fears within you, because the light shines into the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it, right? The more time we spend in the light, the more the light does what the light knows how to do, nonetheless, when these fears do show up on the screen of life, when we're feeling them in our body, 
It's just communication. It's just an invitation to look at it more deeply and see people don't like to do that. People don't like to face their fears. People like to turn away from their fears, pretend that's not happening. La, 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 la. I don't hear that. That's what people like to do because fear is such an uncomfortable place to be. And sometimes it's even a painful place to be. But fears must be listened to. Fears but me must be witnessed, observed, and then fears must be consciously released. Suffice it to say that the way to undo a fear is to bring in the truth because fear is always a lie. Well, there is some kind of fear that's very helpful in the life, but that is more instinct. For example, if you're walking down a dark street and the hairs rise in the back of your head and or the back of your neck and you, you get a weird sense that something's wrong, that's instinct. That's intuition. That's spirit and your body reacting to your environment. We call that fear because it presents in a way that's similar to it, but it's not fear. It's actually in perfect alignment. So we're not talking about instinct. We're talking about fears, fear of rejection, fear of change, fear of failure. Fears like these are always lies. And so to undo the lie, we have to bring in the truth, which is why we started again with divine self-concept. Like it's very simple, not easy, but very simple. I am that I am. I have every right to be here. Oh, I incarnated for this. And I wouldn't have done that if I didn't have everything it takes to do it at the highest level. And you do. Remember this. You would not be called to the work unless you had everything you needed to do that work. God doesn't call people who don't know how to write to become best-selling authors. God calls writers to become best-selling authors. You wouldn't be called to become a best-selling author unless you had the talent, the ability, and the message to write. And so if you have the calling now to heal, if you have the calling now to motivate, if you have the calling now to read or inspire, you have what it takes inside of you to do it and do it at the highest level possible. Now, granted, maybe not all the things have come online yet. Maybe they haven't actualized yet. Maybe there's further learning for you to do. Maybe there are things that you need to consider. Maybe as you continue to work with your frequency and vibration, these lights will start to come on in the house, but they are intrinsic to you. They are a part of who it is that you are. Be Hold the kingdom of God is within you. You have it all right now. So the truth of that, vibing in that, spending your day doing practices, techniques, affirmations that confirm and allow you to embody that will very quickly start to dispel any of these lower fears, which are lies, because the lights shines into the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The darkness is the shadow here, the shadow of the fear, the shadow of the limiting belief. We can, we can notice the fear and witness it and observe it, and then we can process the fear by bringing in the truth that the fear is distorting, and by bringing in the truth, which is the light, the fear cannot overcome it, and we release it. Maybe we release it with a prayer, or we release it on a breath, but we release it, and it is gone. And that is how you deal with fears. Two ways. Two ways to deal with fears. First, be in the light intentionally. Jam on it. Get up in the light and stay there. Stay in the light as long as you can. Because the light knows how to do what the light knows how to do. In a way known only to itself does it move through you. So you don't have to concern yourself about the process of healing yourself. Light, God, love knows how to do that. And will if you intentionally place yourself in that, in the ways that work for you. Whatever brings you love, whatever brings you joy, whatever brings you peace in a way that you can embody that's the light doing the stuff the light knows how to do. 
Secondarily, when you see on the screen of your life that fears have bubbled to the surface, ooh, I'm a little scared to take that step because what if I fail? Or, oh, I don't know if I want to put this message out there because what if they reject it? If those fears start to bubble to the surface and present themselves in your experience, then what you want to do is look at them. What's the communication that the fear is offering? And then bring in the truth to counteract them. Truly, to bring in the opposite of the fear and dismantle that fear with the truth. 